Hey guys, Todd here with Great Escape Farms. This is my water rainwater harvesting update number three. And I'm starting way out at the end and I'm gonna walk through because if I started in the center, it would get rather confusing. So let me start right here. What I did was the bottom plumbing. So I just have this piece capped off. This is where my future tank over here will plug in. And my future tank has quite a few repairs that need to be done to it. So I will catch up with that later. Uh, I come into this T here, the T comes up to this valve, which goes into a quick disconnect there so I can remove the tank and do maintenance and stuff on it if needed. And so this will store 1,550 gallons of water, this one tank here, and that feeds into this line, which comes along, and then it feeds into a 4-inch pipe. And the reason I have 4-inch pipe here is because I have two two inch feeds coming together and I need to be able to handle overflow during downpours and stuff like that. We do get a lot of thunder showers in the area that actually can cause a, a couple of issues for us here. So, so I need the four inch and I'll show you why when I show you the overflow system, but we're not quite there yet. So in order, because I am in a cold climate that does freeze, I need to be able to drain this. So I have everything leveled so that this is the lowest point in the pipe right here. And I'm kind of angled, going down at an angle here, and I have a ball valve out there. So all of this will be covered up. I have it exposed right now. I dug it up and I have it exposed for the purpose of this video. So that end of the ball valve will be sticking out and during the winter time, I can drain everything there. Eventually, I'm gonna have a swale in here and the swale will go all the way across the property. It will be, let's see, 1300 foot. So the one, the swale that this is gonna feed into will be 1300 foot and that water will go into that swale. And so it will be kept in, in the landscape when I do drain that or if I ever need it during drought. Okay, moving on. Coming back across the four inch pipe here, we tee off and this is where we hit our other 1,550 gallon tank here. And while I'm at this point, so the 1,550 gallon tanks are for storage. They are actually collecting on the top side rain from the gutter. So each 1,550 gallon tank collects rain from a gutter on that side of the garage. The garage is 24 foot by 51 foot and because it's an A-frame peaked, so I get half of the water on each side here. So uh, again, same thing on this one. I have a ball valve and a quick disconnect so I can shut it off. Uh, back to our four inch pipe here. Our four inch pipe tees off with a two inch that goes above the four inch pipe there. And I'm gonna cover that one in a moment because that's where I'm actually using the water. Let me cover this four inch here. So the four inch comes up with a 90 degree angle. You can see it right there. It comes up with a 90 degree angle and it comes up to the top and does a U-turn and it goes out and over. And the purpose for that is so that when these tanks overflow or get filled up so that they don't overflow right here. And I will have to put a, uh, a plug in right there. So if you notice the bottom of this U-turn uh, here or the, the turn is below the top here. So if I get too much water and I get close to the top here, what's going to happen is, is it's going to fill this pipe up and it's going to go out and prevent it from draining. If you remember a moment ago, I said that I do have to worry about thunderstorms and getting excessive rain, and that's why I have a four inch pipe. What I could end up doing, because this is coming from the lowest level here, if I get too much water at once, this could cause a siphoning effect and basically drain my tanks out of this four inch pipe here. So to stop that from happening, what I do is I drill a couple of holes in the top up here and that will break a siphon. So it will allow almost four inches of water to go through without leaking out here. And then what I need to do is put a screen over this to keep bugs from getting out. And let me show you a visual on that because I actually have this two inch pipe I had done from an old system. Same thing, I have the pipes over top. And what I did is I just wrapped a screen around it and I put 
uh, wire ties on it and that holds the screen on and that prevents any bugs from getting in my holes here. That reminds me, another thing I'm gonna have to do, which I have not done yet, is out here on the end because that is a four, let me see if I can get down here without killing myself. So I have a four inch hole right here that I will get all kinds of critters and everything in. So I have a couple of different fittings that I'll put on here, or I could put on here. Uh, I'll have to figure out which one's best. I actually have a landscape fitting, so I may put that on. The only thing is, if we get too much rain, it'll come flying off. So I'll just have to keep an eye on that one. Okay, back to our two inch piece here that I said that I would get back to. It comes around, it goes over here. Sorry for the wind, but it's been extremely stormy and windy lately and I just can't get around that. Uh, it comes up here and it goes into the garage. Again, I have a quick disconnect and a ball valve here so I can isolate and shut it off. So let's go into the garage now and see what we have in there. And in the garage, I receive the water from right there. And I come into a pump where I have a pressure tank. And then I go up, I should have pulled that out in the back. I have a filter over there. And then on the other side of the filter, I go out to a regular hose spigot. Now let me go back out to this side. Sorry for all the running around here. Okay, I come out of this hose spigot right here. And by the way, this is how I move the water from the white pump or from the white tank into the green tank is I hooked everything up to the pump and I just pumped it out of the white into the green using this, ho using this hose right here. So I will use this hose for my propagation beds here. These are deer proof propagation beds uh, in various stages of completeness. This one right here in front of me is complete and what I'm going to do it has concrete sand in it and I'm going to put in a mist irrigation bed or this is a mist irrigation bed where I propagate plants rooted and uh, get rooted cuttings and I sell them at Great Escape Nursery. So everything I'm doing here is just for this purpose. The swales will take care of themselves. I have a food forest that is currently taking care of itself. Uh, I have the water if I need it to do all of that stuff but the main reason is so that I can get these propagation beds up and running and really get the nursery going without having to deal with well water. So that's it for this video. I will do another video on the top side plumbing and that one will come in another week or two. So please check back for the next update. Thank you very much and have a great day. Also, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thank you again.